President Fellow at the Center of Conflict and Humanitarian Studies and co-editor of Jadalia, which is an online magazine. He joins us now live from Montreal. Thank you for joining the program. So what, what is your reaction to these aid drops uh, coming from the U.S. today? Well, I think it's worse than useless. It's the equivalent of putting a Band-Aid on a metastasizing tumor and then claiming a medical breakthrough. Um, every aid organization that is involved, every uh, serious analyst who has looked at this has indicated that there is severe hunger and malnutrition throughout the Gaza Strip, that famine is imminent, that children are already dying because of lack of access to food, and most importantly, that the only way that this can be addressed is through a massive infusion of urgently needed aid um, over land. The United States, which is a full partner in Israel's genocidal onslaught on the Gaza Strip, and which is a full partner in the siege of the Gaza Strip, is seeking to divert attention from its role and from Israel's role, and seeking to provide legitimacy to the siege by dropping a few thousand meals ready to eat from the sky, which, again, everyone who has looked at says this is a drop in the bucket and will make mo no meaningful difference um, uh, well, to the overall situation in the In, in the Strip. U.S.'s defense, other countries, including Qatar and Jordan, have also dropped aid into Gaza this way. Yes, there can be no defense of the U.S. rule in the genocidal onslaught of the Gaza Strip. I'm sorry. You're correct that other countries have also engaged in airdrops, but the only reason that they're engaging in airdrops is because Israel, with the full and unconditional support of the United States, is preventing the delivery of sufficient amounts of aid over land. And I think what the U.S. is trying to do now is to, um, as others have noted, legitimize the siege and legitimize a genocidal onslaught by throwing a few packets of food from the air at the starving population. I think another factor that's worth considering here is that, as with the attempt um, uh, to achieve a pause in this genocidal onslaught, the U.S. appears to be very concerned by the onset of the Muslim month of Ramadan in about nine days, and is very concerned that this could be a, a period of heightened opposition to the U.S.-Israeli policy, and is keen to have um, some kind of stability for that period, again, to gain legitimacy for the renewal and intensification of the, ons of, of the onslaught and of the siege once Ramadan ends. So I think the U.S. deserves absolutely no credit mm. for what it's doing, because you know, yeah, please, go ahead. Well, there has been an increased tone of exasperation from the U.S. Uh, and President Biden towards Israel. Yeah, yeah. But, but, I mean, how much is that down, do you think, to the pressure that President Biden is under domestically? I, I, my sense is that Biden genuinely doesn't care. And if he has to sacrifice his re-election in order to stand with Israel, he's fully prepared to do so. Others in his uh, leadership and in the Democratic Party are, of course, extremely concerned. And these airdrops may be one way of, uh, of, of addressing this. Um, but again, you know, given the severity of the reality and given the direct U.S. role in engineering this reality, I think the U.S. deserves absolutely no credit for, again, effect for this smoke and mirrors, for this diversionary charade, for, as I mentioned earlier, putting a Band-Aid on a metastasizing tumor and then claiming a medical breakthrough. We've been reporting this evening that the framework for a deal that would establish a six-week ceasefire in Gaza is now in place. Uh, Israel uh, agrees to this framework, and now it's down to Hamas uh, to tell us what, you know, what they make of it, and apparently they will tell us tomorrow. Uh, what is your reaction to those latest developments? Well, I can fully understand, um, given the desperation of, of, of the Palestinian population in the Gaza Strip, that any respite is a welcome respite. Um, but if it's simply a stay of execution, and if, it's a st and if it's a stay of execution whose primary purpose is to legitimize the renewal and the intensification of the genocidal onslaught of the Gaza Strip, it will ultimately be meaningless. And if I can just make one additional point, yes, 
There is a desperate humanitarian situation in the Gaza Strip. And yes, this desperate humanitarian situation needs to be immediately and urgently addressed. But let's not go back to the late 1940s and 1950s and pretend that the question of Palestine is solely a humanitarian question of giving these people the basic necessities of life and that there is no underlying fundamental political issue, the national rights that need to be addressed and fulfilled in order for this crisis to be ultimately resolved. Moon Rambani, good to talk to you. Non-resident fellow at the Center of Conflict and Humanity.